In this video, we're going to give a little bit more detail about the one dimensional particle in the box energy levels. So in the previous video, we derived this energy expression for the one dimensional particle in the box. We looked specifically at its wave function and noted that this would be the energy eigenvalue if you applied the particle in the box Hamiltonian to the wave function that we got in the previous video. So, um, so one thing to note about this energy expression um, is that like all energy expressions in quantum mechanics, it's going to be quantized, right? And so this uh, N in the numerator is what we call a quantum number, right? So we can call this a quantum number Basically, it's an integer that quantizes the energy, right? Very simple here, right? So it can be any integer starting from one and going up to two, three, on and on and on to higher energy levels, right? So uh, the first thing that we really should should tease out here is that uh, if the lowest energy, if the lowest number of possible value for this integer is one, then that means that the lowest possible energy is not zero, right? If we plug in one here, we don't get zero, right? And that's actually very different from classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, of course, a particle can have a zero energy, right? If something's not moving and it has no potential acting on it, then of course it has a zero energy. But in quantum mechanics, this is different. The particle has to have some base level energy. And that energy is called what we call the zero point energy. So the zero point energy. And in the case of the one dimensional particle in the box, the zero point energy is the energy when n is equal to one. And so that's just going to be h squared over eight ml squared. Right, so zero point energy. We'll come back to that, that point of the zero point energy in just a second. Uh, what I wanna do is kind of turn your attention to this diagram here. Basically, I just kind of sketched out the different energy levels for the one dimensional particle in the box. So on the left side, we have the current energy over the zero point energy, E1, right? So, so to the point where you know the lowest energy would be one and everything else is scaled based on that, right? So what you notice here, Again, different from classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, everything in between here would be allowed, right? So just kind of shading this in, right? What I've shaded in in the white, this would be the classically allowed region, right? Classically allowed region. Right, so basically in classical mechanics, a particle could take on any of these values from one to whatever. Right. Versus for the case of a quantum particle, a quantum particle is going to have these discrete energy levels. And we see that play out here with the one dimensional particle in the box where it has these discrete energy levels that it can jump between. Right. So, OK, so that really gives us, you know, it sets the stage that this is a quantum problem. It has these quantized energy levels. Right. So. One thing that's really interesting to think about is, is why we have this zero point energy in the first place, right? Why is it that we even have a zero point energy? How can we explain it, right? So there, there are two explanations for the zero point energy, right? One of them is that the uh, uncertainty principle demands it, right? So uncertainty principle demands it. Right. Uh, there has to be some uh, base level momentum. Right. It can't be zero because we cannot know the momentum of the particle indefinitely. Right. Uh, that's what we know from the uncertainty principle. So this particle has to have some kinetic energy to it in order to uh, in order for that to be true, for that to be the case, because if it was motionless, then, of course, we could know the momentum of the particle exactly. But we can't. And so the uncertainty principle demands it. The other way that you can think about this, the other explanation is um, that if, if we look at the wave function, right? So the second explanation kind of requires us to, to plot some wave functions here. So let's put an X axis here. I'm just gonna plot uh, a sketch of the first two wave functions for the particle in the box, right? So the first wave function will probably look something like this. That will be N equals one. And the second wave function will probably look something like this. 
right? So that's n equals two. What you notice about these wave functions, right? And then they would they would continue to get shorter and shorter wavelengths as you go up in the quantum number, right? But uh, what you notice about this uh, these wave functions is that there's curvature in these functions everywhere, right? And if you think back to our kinetic energy operator, right, the form of our kinetic energy operator, it's negative h bar squared over two m d dx squared, right? So in order for this to, um, in order for the, uh, the energy to be zero, then there would have to be no curvature here, right? There would have to be a point in a wave function where you just hit like a straight line, right? In order for the second derivative to be equal to zero. But since we see that these wave functions have curvature everywhere, then we know that the second derivative here is not going to be zero. So it's always going to have some kinetic energy, right? So basically the um the curvature of the wave function so curvature of psi implies a non-zero kinetic energy at all points right so basically if your function has some curvature and your operator depends on the second derivative then that operator is never going to be equal to zero because there's always some curvature in that function, right? Okay, so this kind of goes into a little bit more detail about the energy levels and introduces the idea of the zero point energy. So in the next video, what I wanna do is introduce something called the free electron model, which I really think is a great early application of a quantum problem to, uh, to a really useful scenario, right? Being able to calculate excited state energies and molecules using just this particle in the box model. So, um, so I really think it's a really interesting application. That's going to be the focus of the next video.